Hello everyone, welcome to Lazada Sustainability Academy. Through this program, we hope to share with you the necessary knowledge for future-proofing and transforming your business's sustainability. I am your host, Casey from Lazada. Continuing our conversation from last episode about the importance and tips of measuring environmental impacts. Today, I'm honoured to be joined by Brian, again to talk about the practical tools that SMEs can leverage on to start quantifying their sustainability impacts. Let's hear it from Brian, Partner in Sustainability and Climate Assurance Leader for Deloitte, Asia Pacific and Southeast Asia. With over 20 years of experience in the field of sustainability development, Brian oversees Deloitte's ESG services in the Asia Pacific region and also sits on various sustainability committees in Singapore and beyond. Brian, very glad to have you with us. To start with, how does technology help in quantifying environmental impacts and collecting data? Yeah, this is a this is a really good question, and because uh, I think in terms of looking at sustainability data, this is very broad, right? I mean, environmental data, of course, we mentioned several types of environmental data. Uh, no matter this is air pollution, energy consumption, greenhouse gas, waste, water. Um, I mean, all kinds of environmental issues, but also looking at, I mean, other types of sustainability issues as well. This is so broad that uh, we need some measures uh, which are not manual, and we need some automations on those. So technologies play a really uh, significant role in this because we all know that data collection is very extremely time-consuming and requires a lot of attention from many business units. It also involves a large volume of quantitative data, which is um, all, always subject to human errors if we use those many ways of collecting those, which can uh, undermine the data accuracy and also reliability as well. So using technologies or between more specific, some data collection, platforms or softwares or system can help to address most of those issues and it can also allow the automation of data collection process so and also reducing the risk of human errors um, and also save valuable times and resources because i believe for many smes where right, you have many priorities you may you may not want to spend too much time on just collecting the data so why don't you just automate the whole process and on a regular basis, you can look at the dashboard and you can look at what are the areas that you can improve uh, on sustainability, but also looking at the financial side of, uh, of uh, sustainability management as well. And those technologies, uh, in most of the case, they can also incorporate with different standards regulations, frameworks, for example, if you do, if you do business with uh, some major banks in the region, they also they will also send you questionnaires about your sustainability. Or if you're subject to some uh, carbon regulations in the regions, uh, they will, our government also have some expectation as well. So those technologies can incorporate those requirements and they also offer customization options to align with specific business goals as well as uh, the industry requirements as well. So they also, in most of the cases, as far as we know, those technologies also have capability to accelerate the data and provide consolidated views of environmental performance and also facilitating uh, data-driven decision-making as well. So that's why no matter this is a platform or different types of the technologies, as mentioned, sensors, IoT, uh, all kinds of technologies. And this is mainly for the purpose to reduce your time to do such a complicated sustainability data collections. And then you can focus more regarding how you are going to manage your sustainability issues. So that's why technologies in such case is really important. 
indeed, technology can be a very valuable tool for businesses to tap on. So how can measuring environmental impacts help businesses find cost savings and improve operational efficiency? Yeah, so when we sort out the when we when we sort out the quantitative environmental data, I believe that SME will be also will be able to pinpoint the hotspots and identify which are the areas across your operations that create significant environmental impact. Take, take energy for example, right? Because it is relevant to all types of SMEs uh, that no matter you are in the manufacturing or you you do you do trading or whatever I mean energy consumption is uh, will be easy will be the most the easiest one that you can you can you can understand we all know that at the moment I mean the energy price are uh, composed as uh, the energy comp uh, is kind of uh, composed of the operating cost of the companies as a significant amount right? But we are also seeing that in the future, energy price will go up, given that many of the countries have already started or are allowed to start to look at carbon-related pricing, either a carbon tax or emission trading, things like that. So we do assume that the, we do expect that the cost for electricity will go up because those who produce electricity will not absorb the cost. They will just transfer the cost to the, to the users. Unless there are some really advanced technologies that are being developed. So in such case, right, we will expect the operating cost of companies will increase significantly. If we are not managing our energy consumption, trust reducing our carbon emissions. So that's why if we are if we start to look at what are the areas that we are we are consuming the electricity the most, and then we can think about how to minimize our environmental impact, and eventually it creates opportunities for companies to take targeted and effective actions to reduce the energy consumption, and then save the cost as well. So, of course, this example is on energy, but it also applies across other environmental impacts and data, for example, water, waste as well. So that's why measuring is important uh, in terms of helping companies to identify cost, cost saving. But, we are, but when we talk about climate change, right, we are not talking about only today, but the future. The future, the foreseeable future, we can see that energy price will go up. There are more and more stringent environmental laws and regulations. There will be a price for carbon. So how are you going to survive in such an environment that sustainability become a mainstream discussions, mainstream topics uh, are, are among regulators and how you can reduce the cost by doing good and doing well on sustainability. So that's why quantifying those impact will be a very, very critical one uh, for companies to look at their costs uh, in the future. Those are very practical insights for businesses to consider. Moving on to my last question, what resources are available for SMEs looking to start measuring their environmental impacts? Yeah, yeah so resources is always a really um, critical topic for SME, we do believe that. Um, so there are several ways that company can start to look at quantifying their environmental impact by leveraging um, different types of the resources. Uh, first, of course, is to look at government programs and grants. Uh, many governments in Asia, they start to offer programs, grants, and incentives to support sustainability efforts uh, of SMEs. For example, here in Singapore, uh, we we have uh, as a as a as a third party advisor, we have also understanding that uh, many government agencies offer grants uh, to SMEs on sustainability advisory, which we have helped several SMEs in Singapore to obtain such fundings. So, uh, so I think this will be this will be something that uh, SMEs will look at. 
in terms of getting grants, or there are also some subsidies for trainings. Also, send your send your employees to attend some trainings on sustainability, so that they will they will they will have a better understanding on the know how on how they can go back to their position and start to work on such uh, sustainability um, initiatives. So this is the first one, uh, leveraging government programs and grants. And I believe in Southeast Asia, uh, Singapore and Malaysia have similar programs that you can look at. The second one is, of course, uh, looking at financial, uh, working with financial institutions. Uh, as mentioned, uh, many banks and financial institutions, they offer complementary support to their clients on sustainability because they also have some targets to meet to green their portfolio as well. So leverage those support. But on the other hand, uh, all of the financial institutions are working towards uh, sustainable financing. Green bond, green loan, sustainability, link bond, link loan. So once you have your plan and targets on sustainability, you can communicate with those financial institutions to see how to raise the fund uh, for this type of sustainable financial measures. And this will be something that will help you to overcome some short-term investment on sustainability and look for longer term return, uh, no matter financially and also in terms of sustainability as well. The third one, of course, uh, you can get consultants and, ex and, and, and advisors to support, but um, not only asking them to help you to finish some tasks, but more importantly is asking them to do some knowledge transfer train your colleagues for the process and then you can talk the owners talk, talk the ownership in the future on those uh, sustainability initiatives the last one of course we also as I mentioned earlier uh, there are quite a number of online tools and softwares of course some of them they, they you need to pay but some of them are kind of a fee of charge as well so you can look at those to see how to leverage those tools and software for you to monitor your environmental data. Um, and even for some that you will need to pay, I believe at the moment there are quite a number of startups uh, in, this, uh, in the market on sustainability and the fee should be affordable uh, by most of the companies uh, uh, in the region. So you can look at those, uh, but of course, uh, by choosing those tools and software, you need to also be careful uh, to understand the logic behind and also may ensure that the methodologies, uh, know-how are transparent enough as well so that you can understand what that means. So these are all the, these are all the resources that you can get, but as a, uh, for as a recommendations to SMEs, right? There are way a lot of online resources right now on sustainability nowadays. So ask your colleagues uh, if you are management of SMEs, appoint someone or nominate someone uh, to uh, do some studies on those sustainability issues, and started to roll that out step by step within your organization. So this is my recommendation. Thank you, Brian, for the great sharing. To our valued audience, we hope you enjoyed today's conversation. Please remember to stay tuned for the upcoming episode of Lazada Sustainability Academy.